ABC. This is World News Tonight. Good evening. A horrible looking sight. That's the way President Carter described the area around Mount St. Helens today after an hour long helicopter tour of the region. Mr. Carter said the devastation was worse than he expected to see and predicted it will take years to clean up the mess caused by last Sunday's eruption of the volcano. We have a series of reports tonight. First, here is Sam Donaldson. It took a lot of helicopters to move the presidential party today. Five small ones for the president and other VIPs, three large ones for the press and other hangers-on, flying by the scenes of devastation now so familiar to television viewers. The rivers clogged with mud and debris, the mountainside gashed and twisted, still steaming in places like some setting from the twilight of the gods. The timber burned and blown down. And even though low clouds kept the president from actually flying over the crater itself, he found it impressive enough. I've never seen or heard of anything like this before. Somebody said it looked like a moonscape. Mm -hmm. But the moon looks like a golf course compared to, uh, <laughs> compared to what's up there. It is, it is a horrible looking sight. In the small town of Kelso, Washington, the president visited a Red Cross evacuation center, praising the search party volunteers, saying a few words to people who've lost their homes and promising federal aid to the extent necessary. So awed did Mr. Carter seem by the volcano's damage that back in Portland, Oregon, he predicted it would become a sight generations to come would want to see. When safe places are fixed for tourists and others and scientists to come in and observe it, I would say there would be a, a if you'll excuse the expression, a tourist attraction that would, you know, equal the Grand Canyon or something. It's an unbelievable sight. From Portland, the president flew to Spokane, Washington, in search of the heavy volcanic ash fallout that reportedly is threatening crops for hundreds of miles eastward. There was a little dust runway. But it turned out that heavy rain had already dissipated much of the ash. So Mr. Carter spent a few minutes at the airport, then took off for home. His aides calling the overall visit an important expression of presidential concern. His critics calling it a political publicity trip. The president himself, perhaps saying it best, he was the first tourist. Sam Donaldson, ABC News, with the presidential party. This is Stephen Gear. These are some of the sights President Carter did not get to see this morning because of the cloud cover. In the early morning hours before the president's helicopter went into the area, a small maneuverable ABC News chopper flew under the clouds on the east side of the volcano. And for the first time, we saw fantastic scenes that might have been recorded by a space probe circling another planet. Sunday morning's gigantic explosion produced small fires that are still burning four days later. And we could feel the heat from the ash and watch the steam rising from vents in the desolate terrain. In this moonscape, we saw animal tracks made by elk or deer that had somehow survived the disaster. And astonishingly, one set of human footprints clearly visible in the still warm ash cover. Snow and rain were falling, and we saw that water is still draining down the mountainside despite the eruption. This waterfall splashing down through the ashes may not have existed before the explosion. This river flowing from Mount St. Helens is not the Tootle River we have seen so often in the past few days. It's the river called the Muddy, and the evidence is clear that after the eruption, a wall of water more than 20 feet high and 100 yards wide slashed through this riverbed, destroying this concrete bridge and carrying this heavy concrete slab from the bridge a quarter mile downstream. We found footprints in the mud of this riverbank, a man, a woman, and a child evidently hoping to cross the river, but finding it impossible to go through the volcanic mud. Our pilot radioed the Forest Service, and a short time later, these rescue helicopters were taking off to begin searching for those who had made the footprints. For some, no search is needed. Our cameras recorded this tragic sight in the now dry bed of the Upper Tootle River late yesterday. Stephen Gere, ABC News, Portland, Oregon. 